All right, hello, I'm Cindy with Wisconsin Voices for Recovery, and this is Speak Out on Stigma. Today we'll be hearing from Christopher. Hi, Christopher, how are you today? I am excellent. How are you, Cindy? Awesome, awesome. I'm great. Thank you for being here. Of course, it's my pleasure. Yeah, so tell me, if you told someone about your substance use disorder, how do you think the stigma associated with it would affect the way that they treat you? Well, I think this is where the automatic like knee jerk thing is, is to start squirrel caging and to wonder how you're going to be perceived. Uh, you're you're going to wonder whether people think that there's something wrong with you. Uh, and, and here's where, like, I really kind of wanted to flip this question on its head a little bit and describe what happened to me. The, uh, I, I, I went through rehab about three and a half years ago and the weekend before I was, uh, I did intake, I was going to tell a lot of the people I was closest to that what I was going through and what I was about to do, that I was about to check myself into rehab. And I was terrified. I was worried that they were going to, that they were going to think that I was a lost cause, uh, that like I said, that I was broken, but this was the beautiful thing was that they all, every time I told somebody it was met with love and support and the message of let us know how we can help you because we want you to get better. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I still walk into social situations and I kind of go into them guns blazing. Like I really don't hide anything. I'm a very open book, but I still go into situations where I'll let people know that I'm in recovery or, or just that I don't drink. And of course I'm, I start trying to read their minds and I start enmeshing um, and I start, you know, trying to figure out what, what's going on in their brain. Um, and I think it's just because in society, it's become such a loaded topic. Uh, I, I, I'm so glad that we're, that you're doing, uh, you know, uh, speak out against stigma, uh, or speak out on stigma, beg your pardon, because the only way that we're going to make it easier for folks to talk about this is if we talk about it and, and if we have conversations like this. So I, I'm just absolutely, uh, flattered and excited to be chatting about this. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds like that support is what was a wonderful experience for you um, it was, going into it, rehab. It was eye opening because mm-hmm. at that point I knew I could do the work and I knew that the, and I guess here's, here's, you know, sort of what the underpinning of all of this is that the people who mattered, I didn't have to sugarcoat it. I didn't have to lie. I didn't have to hedge it in any way. I, I firmly believe that the people who we love and trust and the people who we know will be there for us in life, th- those are the folks who we can be like completely open and honest with. And now myself, like to a fault, I'm an open book and I tell everybody <laughs> exactly what's going on with me. Um, but I think a lot of people just need to hear that that message that, uh, you know, when, when we're transparent with people and we're open about what we're going through, uh, I, I think that by and large, it's going to be met with love and support. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great, great. And if you tell me, why does stigma have such a negative influence on people battling substance use disorder? Well, because you know, kind of the stuff that we've been talking about, and this is why, you know, I, 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 I love these questions and how much they dovetail together, is that we have so many barriers in our society uh, it, whether it be that, uh, like one of the things that I'm still wrestling with is that I've been unable to get a life insurance policy like that in and of itself to me, like speaks to the sort of stigma that we, that, that we deal with when it comes to having real life opportunities. If somebody knows that we're in recovery. Um, so I think that a lot of it, it's generational. Uh, it's, it's passed down from our family, from our, our parents and our parents, parents. Um, and the thing with 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 a lot of substance use and for me alcohol was my drug of choice mm-hmm. is that drinking is and bear in mind i mean here we are in wisconsin right yeah. like like alcohol and consumption thereof is such a central fiber to our culture <laughs> so there is this feeling that if i if i am unable to drink if i'm unable to take part in this in this social activity that is that is everywhere there's this feeling of I can't belong or mm-hmm. I don't belong. Um, so I, I, th- I think it's it's very much a part of our culture, but I do see we're, we're having more conversations like these. Mm-hmm. We are seeing more establishments that have a really nice section on their menu of non-alcoholic cocktails. So I look around and I see a lot of uh, progress happening, but 
I, I think that really the place where most of the progress is happening and where where we're breaking through is having these sort of conversations and having them, you know, pushed out into the public sphere. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Raising that awareness and and working to eliminate that stigma by by having these voices and, and sharing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Oh, boy. I just, you know, what I want to drill home is that starting with those conversations where I opened up to my loved ones about what I was going through, it was such a game changing moment. And it was really that planted the seed for, as I got a month, a couple of months into recovery, I really started to discover that I wasn't losing my edge. I wasn't going to lose my creativity. Um, I mean, of course, uh, you could see like my pretentious radio head shirt. It's very important to me for me to be edgy. Right. Um, I started to realize I wasn't going to lose that stuff. All the, uh, really what I was going to do is I was going to gain so many things in recovery. And it was, it was over time that kind of the, the script started to flip. And I started to realize that I was gain so, I was going to gain so much more in recovery than what I was going to lose. And that was when I realized it was, it was a matter of like running toward the stuff I wanted out of life and thriving mm -hmm. as opposed to avoiding, uh, uh avoiding the past. So, um, I don't know the, the conversations like these are so powerful. And for me, um, being able to be open and be honest, it, it's a huge part of my recovery story. That's great. Very important words. Very important words. Thanks. Yeah. So thank you, Christopher, um, for sharing your views on stigma. Um, thank you for, to our viewers for watching. Um, Speak Out on Stigma is a forum to raise awareness about the harmful impact of stigma on those in and seeking recovery. Uh, recovery is for everyone, and together we can eliminate stigma. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. Thank you, and have a great day.